Sure are getting a lot of questions on a study that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association that purports to say that vitamin C and zinc are of no value in treating COVID. Well, we've heard this kind of thing before. In my case, for decades, I have seen the media cherry pick not only the studies that it will publish anything about at all, but the parts of the study that it will emphasize and of course, ignoring the other parts that are embarrassing. And what's embarrassing about this study is that they finally gave zinc and vitamin C to COVID patients that were already established. The infection was already established and they went in with too little. I won't say too late, but it was too little to prevent. And the whole point of making your immune system work properly is to prevent. And prevention is easier. Prevention is cheaper. Prevention takes lower doses. Now, the dose that was used of vitamin C was 8,000 milligrams a day, and that sounds like a lot, but it is not enough for treating an existing serious infection. Dr. Robert Fulton Cathcart III, a physician with tremendous experience, and Dr. Frederick Robert Kleiner, another physician with tremendous experience, emphasize that you can't send a boy to do a man's job. You have to use enough. Dr. Thomas Levy says it's about dose, dose, and dose. You have to use enough. The funny thing about this study is that if they had used 1,000 milligrams or 2,000 milligrams, it would probably have done nothing at all. The fact is there was some benefit with 8,000 milligrams of C, but they would have had success if they had used more. And more is bowel tolerance. That means exactly what you think it means. It means giving enough vitamin C to be symptom free, whatever the amount might be, but not so much as causes loose stool. So gradually increasing the vitamin C dose until bowel tolerance is reached is how you determine oral doses of C. But for established COVID in hospitals or with severe outpatient cases, Treatment by intravenous vitamin C is appropriate. And this would use at least 12,000 milligrams intravenously and as much as 100,000 milligrams a day intravenously. Now, 12,000 milligrams of vitamin C intravenously is the low amount that was used in the successful studies in China. But the absorption is absolute. With IV vitamin C, Dr. Atsuo Yanagasawa, president of the International Society for Orthomolecular Medicine, has said that intravenous vitamin C is approximately 10 times more effective than oral. So when you see a dose of, say, 12,000 milligrams of C, that would be like an oral dose of 120,000. Therefore, working the other way, the doses given in the study of 8,000 were clearly too low. What we need to remember is that if you want to do something right, you have to have adequate dosage. This is accepted with pharmacology. I used to be a dairyman. Yes, I did. I used to milk cows and treat cows, and occasionally I would be giving cows antibiotics. Sometimes we would give, and I would personally inject, a cow with 2 million units of an antibiotic. And back in 1978, that was a lot of antibiotic. Now, if I gave 2 million units of an antibiotic, I probably could say to the vet, if the cow was not getting any better, you know, what are we going to do here? But if I gave only a tenth of that, or an even smaller fraction of that amount of an antibiotic, and it didn't work. And the vet said, well, how much did you give? And I said, well, I gave a tenth of what you prescribed. And the vet would say, well, see. Now, we would get that first time through with animals or with medications. But we don't seem to be able to get the media or a lot of doctors to understand this with vitamins. You have to give enough to get the job done. You don't give enough that you think ought to work or that you have politically preordained as the amount that should work. We also need to keep in mind that it's more than just a matter of giving vitamin C. 
vitamin C works better when it has other nutrients to support it because the immune system works better when it has other nutrients to support it. The study did use zinc, but there should be more zinc given and more immediately as soon as symptoms first appear. 50 milligrams of zinc should be given as soon as symptoms appear, vitamin C should be given to bowel tolerance. In addition to that, uh, we would add magnesium 400 to 600 milligrams a day in divided doses. Vitamin D is in dug, uh, 5,000 units a day at least uh, to begin with, even 10,000, some orthomolecular authorities say, and then you can scale that back perhaps to two or 3,000 a day after a week. Selenium, one or 200 micrograms a day, a good multivitamin, and this would give a person a better chance at recovery from moderate to severe COVID. Prevention is easier than cure, and the same media that reports on this study as being a failure for cure hasn't said anything about using the amounts in this study for prevention. And the fact is, the amounts used in this study were preventive amounts, but they were given too late. Once again, the medical profession and the media was a day late and a dollar short. When someone tries to tell you that vitamins don't work, you have to say, well, then money doesn't work. Really? Yeah, money doesn't work. I went into a Ferrari dealership the other day and I saw a nice Ferrari automobile, nice bright red, 175 mile an hour Ferrari, beautiful, beautiful. And I tried to buy it, but they wouldn't take my money. They wouldn't accept money, money's no good. And then you're gonna ask, well, how much money did you offer them? Oh, I offered them $8,000 for that Ferrari. 8,000 milligrams, you with me? I offered them $8,000 and they said no, they laughed at me. They said that's not enough. They said this car costs $320,000. You see where I'm going with this. If you have a hole in your roof and the roofer comes and says, you know, I'm sorry, but there's so much damage and rot, we're going to have to redo that roof and it's going to cost you about $3,500. And you say, well, wait a minute. Um, when I went to the hardware store four years ago and looked into roof ceiling compound and material to fix the patch, they said I could do it for about 80 bucks. So here's 80 bucks put on a new roof. No, it's just not gonna work. So no matter how you look at this, it's not a matter of philosophy, it's a matter of do what works. And with vitamins, you take enough to get the job done. That's so simple, any child can understand it. Someday, I hope the media and the Journal of the American Medical Association will too. This is Andrew Saul, the Mega Vitamin Man. I'm at it again, but still with you. On your side, take C, take care, and don't stay safe, stay well, because if you're healthy, if you're well, that's real security. Hiding from a virus doesn't make your immune system strong. Vitamins do. I have no financial connection with the supplement industry whatsoever. I simply want me, my family, and you to be healthy. Not safe, but healthy. We live in a world of dangers, but the one thing we can control is what we will or will not eat in a given day. Whether we will or will not exercise, whether we will or will not supplement, whether we will or will not turn off the TV, and whether we will or will not accept the biased news reports that miss the point entirely. You can't cure with a preventive dose.